Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Sarah Reynolds. I'm Wendy Papazan. And I'm Via Williams. Today, we are going to kick off our leadership series on self-leadership. What is self-leadership, you ask? Well, it is simply the foundation of everything involved in being a leader, ladies. Self-leadership is influencing yourself rather than others, right? And I, I would argue it's it's influencing yourself in order to influence others since we're talking about leadership. But but it's influencing your your inner self so that your outer self can act and be a leader. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Tao Te Ching. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. The Tao. Is that how I pronounce it? Tao? I think so. Mm-hmm. Is that how I pronounce it? I feel, I feel like Wendy. Wendy's the expert on this. Uh, so I'm going to back out of that <laughs> question. So Lao Tzu. Well, Lao the Tao Poo. That's about it. <laughs> no, it's the Lao Cha. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's the author of that. And I loved this quote enough to to have spent 30 seconds talking about how to pronounce his name. Uh, And the quote is, mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. Mm. So I'd like to think of self-leadership as the power behind our leadership because it is it is. It is proportional directly. Your success as a leader is directly proportional to how you are as a self-leader. There is a direct relationship. So, you know, I always say business growth is autobiographical. I heard that from Mark Willis, a former CEO of mm. Keller Williams. And I, I have turned that almost into a mantra. And I think it also describes self-leadership, right? Business growth is autobiographical. Yeah. So, so uh, about, uh, yeah. Uh, Leading from the inside out, right? Thoughts become things, right? All of that sort of inside out kind of mentality is really what we're talking about because the only thing we can really control is our mindset and how we react to things. And so what we're talking about is really mastering our mindset so that we can become the best leaders possible. And to start, we have to master our own thoughts and feelings and how we act and show up in the world. Really, really, really well said. Um, you guys know P- Peter Drucker. He's yeah. a, he's a famous man, famous Not management personally. Um, author. I'm forgetting the name of the book. Yeah. <laughs> Is he still? Well, I'm not going to ask. Um, he's been around for a long time. <laughs> uh, he also had a really good, uh, I think a more simplified explanation. I just really liked it. Being a self-leader is to serve as chief captain or CEO of one's own life. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, because we're, you know, we talk about building big businesses, but also bigger lives. And that's, you know, that's a little bit more, right, all encompassing for us. So, you know, the way I think about it is everybody on on planet Earth is a self-leader because we we are who, you know, we are a being, but not all self-leaders are actually good at it. Mm. So Wendy mentioned it really well. Self-leadership is about your inner game for sure, your mindset and what goes on privately. But it's also about your outer game and behavior and action and performance. It has to be about both, right? So we're going to go through six inner and outer game tactics today that are going to make you a great self-leader. And, and what I wanted to just add to that is that it's a lifelong pursuit, right? This is your job. Your 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 job for yourself is to always work on your self leadership, your self mastery, really self actualization. Depending on how you want to put it, it's a process, not an event. So you don't get to listen to this episode, go work on the things, and say, "Okay, great, I'm a, I'm a great self leader." It's in thirty days. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's so important that we're starting off our leadership series on this topic because I think so much of leadership is first leading ourselves. Because the truth is, is whether we like it or not, um, when you're the leader of your organization or when you are leading, um, even if you're leading one person or leading two people or you're leading hundreds of people, um, your organization does reflect who you are um, and your entire, those that follow you are looking to you. And so if you don't first have um, in yourself the ability to lead yourself, just know that the things that you struggle with many times, those that follow you will also struggle with it. 
I, I think about my sort of health journey with this. Um, and, you know, I didn't do a good job with leading myself uh, with making my health a priority. And then you saw that re be reflected across my organization, right? Um, and so this isn't something that we get a pass at when we're the leader. We get to, tr we truly have to first lead ourselves um, in every way uh, and just know that how we lead ourselves will then turn around and impact so many people, good and bad. Which is why, you know, we talk so much about self-care here on the podcast. And um, it's not just because we're airy-fairy and we like to take a lot of breaks or anything like that. Because if you do want to build a big business, you know, the biggest, best business leaders, they do have what Sarah's talking about. They're taking care of their health. They're taking care. They've got their morning routine. They're working on their mental health because it's not possible to lead other people, right? You need to, you need to really show them the way by how you're acting. And if that feels intimidating to some of you, you know, take heart. It's a journey, right? We're all works in progress. Um, none of us is perfect. And, you know, sometimes we, we lead ourselves strongly. We go down a road, maybe in health or whatever that looks like. And then, then we fall off the wagon. You know what I mean? And it's okay to be like, okay, well, we're going to show people that struggle, just get back up there and, uh, you know, go after it again or whatever that looks like. And I, I think for, I, I've, I've struggled with this at times in terms of like protect, trying to protect myself from a victim mentality around this, uh, because it's like, sometimes you can be like, well, no, like that's none of their business or that's not, you know, it's, it's not fair that all of this is sort of imposed on on me in terms of like, uh, uh, they reflect who, who we are, right. As a leader. And I just think about, you know, the Bible verse to whom much is given, much is required. Leadership is a gift it, to me. It, 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 I believe the people that, that are in my organization are true gifts to me. And so if that's been given to us, right, then yes, much is required. So don't be, don't be a victim about it. You have to first learn to really lead yourself. Um, and just know that your whole or organization will reflect on that. And so, yes, you've got a lot required of you. Um, and so be careful not to fall into the victim mindset around this topic as well. I know I've struggled with that at times. So, I love everything all of you guys just said. And, and I agree. We are all leaders. Every single person on, on this earth is a leader. And some of us just have innate skills and gifts and talents to lead more people in different ways. So it's really how this shows up in your life. And, and I was just listening to you guys thinking, you know, in a way, our entire podcast is teaching people how to be self-leaders, right? In a way, almost everything we talk about, it all starts here. You, you can call it self-mastery. You can call it, you know, whatever you want. But but this is the foundation. And since this is a leadership series, we're, you know, when we walk through these six tactics, they're going to be a little bit more oriented, I would say, towards a business leadership environment. But that anything we, we always talk about can be translated into any form of leadership, whether you're a, you know, stay at home parent or running a fortune, you know, 500 organization, right? Any, any point in between, I would say most of our listeners are more small and medium business owners. And, um, I think that's probably what this is. I think it's mainly our experience, right? Ladies that, that we kind of kind of come out on it. Yeah. Yep. And, and that, leadership is, is something that you can get better at. You know, just because leading. Yeah. So, and just because you, you may or may not think you have innate talent, it doesn't mean you can't get better at leadership. So leadership is just like anything else. Yeah. And actually That's the right. biggest determiner of, of success is really repeatable activities done over time. So if you're waking up every day thinking about uh, becoming a leader, working on your growth, you will become a better leader. So the first part of our, um, podcast today is really is learning and growing, right? It's education. Yep. Are you uh, working on your education? Did you, yep. did you know that Warren Buffett reads about 500 pages per day, sometimes wow. four to six hours a day? Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I did know that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And being a he thinks everybody should growth, read 500 pages a day. He's probably right. Yeah. I mean, think about all the time people waste on social media and television and mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, it's hours every single day. You know, what if everybody yeah, read instead of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we yeah, talked so about this 
in episode uh, 77 when we uh, talked about committing to self-mastery. And um, I think that that's what this reminds me of is just like the focus on, you know, that's why it's the first thing uh, for leading yourself is, are you a student? Are you constantly growing? Are you constantly learning? Are you remaining coachable? I think a lot of times um, that has is important. Um, you know, I've seen leaders get to a point where they feel like they've arrived or they know everything, but it's so important to, to remain coachable and, and humble um, to know that you still have a ways to go. So I love that. Well, I know, you know, when my team fell apart, I suffered from some of that, you know, just because you have one fantastic year in business doesn't mean you're running a fantastic business. You know, there's a lot of other things that went into play. And I mean, I literally was walking around that year, just patting myself on the back. You know, I wasn't in sales, thinking about what a great job I've done, uh, you know, kind of bragging to Gary Keller. And, um, you know, I was very humbled by what happened to me. And ultimately, that was the best thing that happened to me was that humbling. Um, not that I'm humble. You guys know that. But it was a humbling for me. And, um yeah. So what, I mean, what you're talking about, Sarah, is just really important because we're, you know, at the end of the day, every ceiling that we cross, right, becomes our new floor, right? And so the goal yeah. of our bigger life is to continue to break through those ceilings and then understand that those ceilings now become our floor. And that's the humbling part, right? We're at a new yeah. level. We're, we're starting a new game. Uh, we've got to surround ourselves by different people sometimes who are you know, working for that next level as well. And one um, sort of tactical way I want to share that, that I do this is um, I'm a, I'm a pretty focused person on certain topics. And so typically I will look at my leadership and say, where do I need to grow? And in every year I sort of pick a topic that I know I need to grow in as a leader. So last year it was on scaling culture and I read every book on on culture, right? Um, and leading through that. This year it's on communication. So I'm 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 reading a lot on communication and trying to be better um, in terms of communication. And so for me, it's been hard just to be like, oh, I'm gonna learn all the things or I'm gonna read lots of things. I, I've always had to have sort of a focus for me. And so if, if you look at your leadership and maybe say, what area in my leadership that do I need to improve on? Um, and then become sort of a master of that topic over a certain period of time has been something I've done that's really helped me. So I wanted to share that. I do the same thing, Sarah. And I think that also it gives you the motivation to do the learning. That's what motivates and drives me because I mm. need it in the moment. And so I tend to be like you where I go through jags of, I don't know if it's six months, 12 months, uh, whatever it is where I just need something. And because I need it and I'm actively practicing it, refining it, editing it, going back, learning something new, it's motivating to keep keep going. That's good. Yeah, I love that. So, yeah, that's so smart. So number two, after um, constantly be learning and growing and, and looking at yourself, number two is really focusing on uh, becoming a strong leader for yourself in terms of developing self-awareness of your strengths and weaknesses. Um, I think so many times uh, when we're when we're leading, we have we need to first start with knowing ourselves, right, and knowing what are we really good at, um, what are we not so good at, and you know, I I'm a big believer in. Um, you know, knowing your strengths and then sort of building around that to where you're build, you're you're including people in your organization or around you that balance those out to where if you're weak in an area, you're hiring someone that's strong in that area to help you. But it first starts with knowing yourself. Um, so we use uh, Gallup Strength Finders as sort of a tool uh, for this that you can use, um, but really understanding who you are. Uh, first and foremost, uh, is part of, of leading thyself. I think you're well, really great at, at doing that, Sarah, at like strength finders and having everyone in your world you talk the same language on that and, and work in an environment of strengths and weaknesses. I think you're really, really great. I think it's one of your hallmarks, actually, as a leader, is, is taking you know, a group and a team and and putting it all together as far as what everyone, you know, everyone does well and not well, and then and having a dialogue around it and having everyone else have that awareness. I just think you're really good at that. Yeah, Thank I you. would agree. And it's it's something, it's a skill that you develop over time, you know, putting the pieces together of your organization. 
It's not something that's intuitive. It's not something that like, I mean, maybe some people are better at it than others in, you know, innately, but at the end of the day, it's really something, you know, a big part of leadership is leading. You know, I love the idea of reading books and yes, you can read books, you know, but at the end of the day, all three of us have had, you know, more than a decade of leadership experience. And Sarah, you're almost on, you're practically on two decades. And it really shows because you've been very purposeful with your leadership for over 20 years mm-hmm. or almost 20 years. And um, honestly, guys, leading is is how you get to be a better leader, right? And if you don't have a team, yeah, right. consider consider leading things in your community. Become a HOA president. Uh, you know, lead a, a fundraising. Um, you know, something for an organization that you love. All of that leadership ability and skills will translate onto your team as your team grows. Yeah, I, I I'm passionate about this topic um, so much, and so I, I do want to share. Um, just some tactical ways that that we go about it. So we just had a situation in one of our locations where um, the leadership team was not unified in that location. And it was having a ripple effect on uh, that location in terms of the team members. And, and I saw it in the numbers. So numbers always tell you what's that there's something going on. And typically um, it's a leadership thing. And so uh, I flew to that location this past week And I just sat in a room with the leaders and I printed out everyone's strength finders. And I said, we're going to provide massive clarity to our team this week. We're going to go over um, your, each of your strengths. And then we're building a complete detailed job description uh, using those strengths. And then we're going to share that with the team to make sure that the team understands each of your roles to where we're providing clarity to the team um, around who does what and why And it all came down to because they're the best at it, right? Using their strengths to then build that job description and then sharing that with the team in terms of clarity was super powerful. Like it might, it might sound strange, but honestly, I think this is something that's key for you as a leader to share your strengths with your people, um, for them to know what you're good at and also just be very transparent. I'm not good at X, Y, Z. And so I need someone to help me with that. And so being willing to share openly about not just what you're good at, but what you struggle with to where your team can come around you. I think that is such a perfect example of what I was just saying. That's what I mean. You you are such a good leader w- w- in this realm. And um, what I was just thinking is like, I, I have, I have, built a very successful career by certainly by my definition and by by all counts on doing four things five sure. things really well that's it that's all all I do well but since we're talking about self leadership what i would add on top of that is that you do have to develop uh the you know sort of peace with letting everybody else do everything else and so I think that you could be good at something, but not completely in your zone of genius and something like I, I would say I am just, I'm pretty great at anything real estate related. And I just have to accept that someone that's been like a designated broker for 20 years straight and run offices and looked at thousands upon thousands of contracts, they're going to be better than me. And so while it might be tempting for me to step in, in that situation as an example, they, they are the better person for it. And developing an inner peace and being okay with saying, look, here are the four or five things I do really well. And I am going to, I'm just going to internally not be jealous, frustrated, you know, controlling or whatever, whatever the thing is to let other people do everything else to me is taking conscious action. I've had to be purposeful around that. And we talked about it a little bit in the fear of being irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I was just going to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was a good one. I'm glad we spent a little more time on that. Thank you, Sarah. I just think that's really one of your superpowers in, in your leadership. You. you have a lot of them, and I think that's one of them. So the third uh, way to become a great self-leader is learning how to set goals and to achieve them. So now we're going to get into frameworks. <laughs> Why do you think I gave this one to myself? 
<laughs> like this one I can handle. There's a framework behind it. Um, so you need to learn how to, you know, create goals and visions of desired outcomes, both big and small. It can sometimes be, what's the outcome I want of this conversation? Or, you know, it doesn't have to always be big, but certainly you need to have uh, be have an ability and or learn how to create visions and goals and desired outcomes. And then I believe you need to learn how to start thinking in terms of backing into them. So I would say reverse engineering backing into them and doing the activities that you need to hit them. Now, luckily, with this particular one, it is a highly tactical one. You need zero talent in this arena. Uh, you know, you can you can use the SMART goals concept. SMART goals is kind of, I, I don't know, the universal way to set a goal. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, if I recall. Yeah. And Did, so, you know, oh, yeah. Or realistic, yeah. Is it realistic? Did I, yeah. Did I tell you guys the story about the, with the puzzle with Olivia and like a proud mom moment about this goal setting? No, I have to sh- no. I, I have to share just because I want to brag on my uh, baby girl. <laughs> well, not so baby. She's nine. Uh, so we, Aww, I love puzzles. She's almost a teenager. I know it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I love, I love puzzles. And many times um, that's what I do to like call my mind. And so we were starting a new puzzle and so we were doing the edges and Olivia looks at me and goes, mommy, what's our goal for when this will be finished? <laughs> and, and I was like, our goal. And it, it, she's like, yes, we need a goal and we need to make sure that we hit it. <laughs> and I was like, my, my, my mama leadership heart was like, I love you. Yes, we need Aww. a goal. So, so we set a, set a so goal. So much for to calming your mind though. <laughs> I know. Because now you're like, uh. <laughs> I know, but just that, like, I worked on that puzzle, like, hardcore, because I was like, we have this goal (laughs) that we set. (laughs) Um, But it's so powerful to, when we set goals, um, all of a sudden, you end up hitting them at times. (laughs) And so, Mm -hmm. what a concept. So, I love it. Yeah. A lot of this, this this concept, oh, sorry. I just was going to say, this concept is, is is really the foundational piece of of really having that big life and getting everything that you want. And it's it's yeah. dreaming about what you want and then and systematically going after it, uh, using goals, be, holding yourself account, accountable. So then you look up in five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you're like, wow, I really have accomplished a lot in my life. You know, I, I think about the three of us and I think about all of our dolls and, and other friends of ours. And it, it is truly remarkable. You know, I've known you guys, some of you for 10 years, I've known you via for 10 years now, and it's truly remarkable, uh, the transformation. Um, and it's really because of, of this, you know, it's yeah. really because of number three. Wendy, do you want to talk about uh, GPS and 411 and how we use it for this? Sure. Well, I do love the GPS and actually I got a really good tip when I was teaching, uh, well, when I was facilitating the Quantum Leap um, session that we did recently with young adults and somebody gave me this tip, which is to, if you're creating a GPS, right? And a GPS is a very simple plan and GPS stands for one goal, um, two or three priorities, and then the strategies that you need under those priorities to achieve them. So, but I got a really great for people that struggle with with coming up with with um, priorities under that goal. Somebody suggested that we do a almost like a negative or a reverse GPS. So you think mm. of something that you want to accomplish, and then you think about all the things that are holding you back from accomplishing that, and those become your priorities. So let me give you an example. So let's say I want to uh, I want to lose ten pounds. Okay, what's holding me back from that? Well, I watch too much TV, I eat too much ice cream, and you know I get up too late in the morning to to get my exercise in because it's Texas and it's too hot by the end of the day to do it. So bearing that in mind, my priority one is going to be um, uh, watch less television right? Priority Mm. two is stop eating ice cream. And priority three is get up an hour earlier. So I have time for exercise. I I, love that. I personally thought it was like a really great way of thinking about it. And so, yeah, so I'm trying to, trying to spread the good news. Yeah. I love that. And then, you know, under each one of those priorities, I would put, um, some strategies that would help me 
achieve them, which would be, you know, maybe under the sleep one, it would be, or get up early, it would be get a little bit more sleep, stop drinking wine before bed. I don't know, whatever those things are. Well, yeah, like what you can put on your calendar is go to bed by X, you know, wake mm-hmm. up by X and, you know, and whatnot. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So right after, so once you have goals set uh, for yourself, number four is making sure that you have motivation to do the activities that actually hit the goals. So part of leading yourself is um, increasing your motivation and dedication. So internally. Uh, And so one of the things that has helped me um, with this is, you know, I, I lead with a lot of competition strength. So that's my number one um, strength, but it actually shows up the most in, um, in my, myself, meaning I compete with myself um, constantly. So do, can I see growth in this area of my life? And, and, and have I developed more as a leader in this area and sort of setting the bars at, at different things to where I'm looking at myself and saying, okay, can I improve here? And then that helps me stay motivated and sort of inspired just to get a little bit better, to get a little bit better. Um, and so making sure that you dig deep on keeping yourself um, motivated and de- uh, dedicated um, to those goals personally. Yeah, I, I love that. I um, I created um, kind of a manifesto, I don't know another way to put it, of my 12 DHBs of my life that I've been teaching mm-hmm. to small select groups lately, my deeply, deeply held beliefs. And one of them is that my greatest competitor is my maximum potential. And oh. um, it really does drive me like it it truly drives me. And, and there's that quote, I don't have it in front of me, but it's basically, you know, m- my own version of hell is meeting the person I could have become on my deathbed. That's a paraphrase of it. And wow. uh, that concept really drives me. It, it truly drives me. And that is the definition of intrinsic motiva- motivation. There's extrinsic or external motivation and intrinsic. And I I would also say that there are times where external motivation's really good. Example, I just bought a, you know, second home, a a dream on on a lake, right? That was an external Mm -hmm. motivator over the last year. That that was great for the short term. But but what makes me actually driven to do the work every day, to do the hard work to push is more, you know, competing against my own potential. But there's certainly, you know, it's okay to, if you're trying to lose weight, you know, you're trying to be healthier. Of course, it's okay to hang a bathing suit in front of you and have an external motivator. (laughs) Like, I want to look good in that. (laughs) Yep. So um, number five is emotional intelligence. Now we did a whole deep dive on this on episode 43. And there are great books, Emotional Intelligence 2.0. We are really nailing our episode numbers this time. We're really on the ball. I'll just give you guys that. Um, Just ask who wrote this episode today. (laughs) Be aware. Who wrote the episode? (laughs) Me. They're on the script. (laughs) <laughs> oh, high need for that, right? So number five is emotional intelligence. And there are five components of emotional intelligence. And, and again, this is not a deep dive. I'm going to give one, ex- I'm going to pull one example out. However, I will list all five. Number one, self-awareness. Number two, self-regulation. Number three, motivation. So you can hear a themes of all of this throughout, right? Number four is empathy. Number five is social skills. They're all important. I just wanted to share a personal story with you that um, out of all of those, the one that's made the biggest impact to me in my life. And when I teach and speak and mentor and coach, I find that uh, people that have that are wired like me really relate to this particular one. What I also find is you will hear this and you will either not relate at all or you'll completely relate. <laughs> so if you're a more emotional person like I am, you're going to be like, that's the one, just like I did. If you're not, this may not be uh, speak to you as much. That's what I found. It tends to be either or. But learning how to um, emotionally regulate myself has been one of the biggest skills that I've done over the last four or five years in a self-leadership way. And so it's really developing the ability to interact with others and make decisions based on calm, you know, rational thinking versus emotional responses. And, and it has really probably changed my life the most. And it's also made me far more aware of how uh, prevalent this is with other people. 
people. The more I have worked to improve it, by by all, no means am I perfect at this. And I've also just recognized more and more, this is a bigger, more pervasive issue than I, I was even understanding because I was also struggling with it, right? So um, what this really means is not letting anger, jealousy, frustration, resentment drive your decisions. And yes. and that that one skill we talked about, empathy, you have, to, you have to exercise a lot of muscles that you maybe haven't exercised before. So there are books on this. There are people you can talk to on this. We're, we're not going to completely deep dive. And I will share that journaling really helps me uh, in these moments. I tend to be a um, situational Journer, journal journaler. I don't journal every day, but I journal as a way out of emotional regulation. Um, also, identifying the emotion and the trigger, staying in the emotion when it's flooding over you. Uh, I recently did some work. It's called somatic work, which is where you can feel in your body different levels of stress and tension and anger and and where 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 it's coming in your body. So for me, if, if it's upper chest, it's just starting. If it's in my stomach, it's developed more than I realized. And so you mm, can kind of start yeah. understanding where the triggers are hitting you and being much more self-aware of that. And you can then refrain yourself and restrain yourself in your actions, right? Um, I have a, a great 24-hour rule that I talk talk about a lot um, uh, for resentment. Anytime I'm upset or angry or resentful at someone, I, I typically address it immediately, certainly within 24 hours. There are some exceptions to that. Sometimes it's better if I don't, <laughs> but usually that, I, that's the case. I One of the, one of the things, I honestly, this, this almost should be number one on yeah, with this probably. because because yeah. th it's part of leading yourself so much, which is controlling your emotions and self regulating as he uh, is talking about. And one of the things that has has helped me with this is um, that's more tactical is when I see something wrong uh, or I I'm having some type of form of emotion around something or um, a, a problem. The first thing I do is I write it down. Um, before I think I used to act on it right away. Um, and now my sort of action is to go and write it down. Typically I will write it down under the person's name that has it to do with that item. And then my, when I think about things, when problems arise or how to regulate myself, I think, okay, what's the best way for me to communicate this to where the other party is actually going to hear it? So it's actually not about me. It's about who is hearing it. Um, but it first starts with regulating yourself and your emotion around that that item first. Because you have to lead that emotion first before you can then even lead someone else. And so such a huge, huge part of leading yourself is regulating um, your emotions around something. Well, and that's using journaling, yeah, right? Well, that's a great way yes. to use that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And one of the things that we were uh, talking about before our... Uh, podcast started is this idea of actually helping your nervous system become better at this. And there are ways that you can do it. So if anybody out there has done, uh, it's called, well, we call it like hot and cold, which is where you submerse yourself into a really cold plunge with ice cubes. And then you get into the sauna and you kind of go back and forth. And one of the benefits of that, I mean, there's a lot of health benefits from it, but one of the benefits of it is really to regulate your, help regulate your nervous system. Because when you're getting in that that cold bath, um, you're just your brain is telling your body it's okay, it's fine, it's just cold, it's not gonna you know because our body, it our bodies are meant to respond to things, mm -hmm. right? That's how we're human, and we've got this you know brain that can control parts of you know most of our body. So instead of just letting our you know whatever brain take over, we're saying you know what it's okay. It's not going to hurt me. And just like calmly getting into that frozen bathtub and you'll see people, you know, flailing around. And those are people who don't have control over, over their nervous system. Mm, that's good. That's really good. And, and it's so tactical. Yeah. Both yeah. of those are right. so tactical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, number six kind of brings it all together. And number six is really influencing yourself. So understanding who you are, knowing what your triggers are, working on your leadership, you know, day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. And then at a certain point, um, you're going to have a relationship with yourself 
uh, that you feel comfortable with and it actually aligns with your true self, right? So it's really when your inner game um, is is consistent with your outer game. And I'll give you an example of this. So we were at a, we were at InvestorCon, uh, shout out to those InvestorCon girls. It's a, a real estate investing conference for women. And um, they had us do an exercise where you had to think about the name of your brain, right? So that voice in your head, that's always mm. talking to you, you know, and, wow. and, um, yeah, it was a great, I thought it was a fantastic exercise. And and that brain is is either, you know, whatever it is, Debbie or Merle or, you know, what, whatever the name of your brain was. And we had to write it on our, um, we had to write it on our, our tag. And, um, and to be honest, and I'm not saying this to brag, but I had a little bit of, of trouble coming up with the name of my brain. And I think some of that is, is because I've done so much work in the last, especially the five years, aligning my inner game with my outer game that mm. my brain is, is me now. My brain mm. is really, it's, it's the me that I want to be, you know, and for those of you that know me, I, I, you know, I try to live my life from the inside out. I'm just who I am. I let my freak flag fly. And, um, and so some of that is kind of what you're, you're getting to, which is where you're, you're not having this inner conflict, this inner, like who you are on the outside is very different than the real you on the inside. And, um, and that's when you can truly attract uh, leaders around you and people in your organization who are aligning with you and your vision, you know, because I think like Sarah said, leadership is a gift, right? Um, and everybody, if you've got a passion for it, can be a leader and we're all leaders in our communities and inside our families, but leadership is a fantastic gift. And so working to get to that place where those two things are more in alignment is just, is just a really powerful place to be. I, I love that, Wendy. It makes me think of um, the 10 questions that Gary Keller um, gave us about six months ago um, that he asked himself every year. And um, they're all about internal, how we view ourselves. Um, and I think it's so, so important on this topic to um, take time at times to sort of uh, ground ourselves, make sure that we're staying true to who we are, make sure that our inner um, selves as matching our outer selves. And, you know, sometimes with, with leadership, it, it's hard to do that at times. But I think the example that he set of taking time at least once a year to really ask ourselves these key questions, I know for me that really impacted my life. Um, and I, I took some time away um, by myself and went through the 10 questions and it had a big impact. And it was all around this. And I think, Wendy, you are very good at this. Um, and I think, uh, I don't view it as bragging at, at all. I view it as um, sharing what you're what you've been gifted, and then also just the work that you've done. It shows, um, and I think that that's an example for all of us. What I love about all six of these things is you can always improve and grow in all of them, right? Uh, and so, like this this one in particular, you can see your growth in it, Wendy, and and I'm I, I you inspire me to be better in this area for sure. Well, and we'll definitely put those questions in the show notes uh, for those of you that are curious about what the 10 questions are. Uh, hopefully one of us can dig those up. And yeah. um, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today because it's been, uh, for me, a really powerful reminder of leadership is an inside out journey. And um, we're all put on this planet for a reason. And uh, that reason is inside us from the beginning and it's it's not that we're it's not that we're lost right it's that we're we're uncovering what that is and uh it's something that we do on a day-to-day week-to-week month-to-month journey and um, we just are so grateful for our listeners and so glad you joined us today and just please remember to keep growing your big businesses and your even bigger lives thanks guys bye guys